chest, speak softly. Uh, Good evening, I'm Dr. David Underwood, and I'll be the moderator for this class, and welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing the proof of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school is incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Lansing Branch was established in 1973. The Dean of the Lansing Branch is Dr. Terry Welch, and the superintendent is Dr. Tim McNamara. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name of the Father, Word or Son, and Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a superincorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, 
whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you to find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical and occult, science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. And at this time, we'll have a prayer by Dr. Serna. We'll have Ezekiel, the 46th chapter, to be read by the secretary, Dr. Janice Welch. We'll have selections from the choir. We'll have announcements at the end of class. For this evening, we'll have Dr. Graciela Underwood and our superintendent, Dr. Tim McNamara. Thank Yahweh for bringing us here so we can learn about his purpose, pattern, and plan. 
And bless those people who would be listening to this teaching tonight. For that, let's say hallelujah. evening class. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trana, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Ezekiel 46. Thus saith Yah Yahweh, the gate in the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut the sick shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and in the day of the new moon it shall be opened. And the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate without, and shall stand by the post of the gate. And the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings, and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Then he shall go forth, but the gate shall not be shut until the evening. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of the gate before Yahweh in the Sabbaths and in the new moons. And the burnt offering that the prince shall offer unto Yahweh in the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. And the meal offering shall be an ephah for a ram and a meal offering for the lambs as he shall be able to give and a hen of oil to an ephah. In the day of the new moon, it shall be a young bullock without blemish and six lambs and a ram. They shall be without blemish. And he shall prepare a meal offering, an ephah for a bullock and an ephah for a ram. And for the lambs according at his hand shall attain unto and an hen of oil to an ephah. And when the prince shall enter, he shall go in by the way of the porch of the gate, and he shall go forth by the way thereof. And when the people of the land shall come before Yahweh in the solemn feast, he that entereth in by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate. And he that entereth by the way of the south gate shall go forth by the way of the north gate. And he shall not return by the way of the gate whereby he came in, but shall go forth over against it. And the prince in the midst of them, when they go in, shall go in, and when they go forth, shall go forth. And in the feast and in the solemnities, the meal offering shall be an ephah and Ephah to a bullock, and an ephah, ephah to a ram, and to the lambs as he is able to give, and an hen of oil to an ephah. ephah. Now when the priests shall prepare a voluntary burnt offering or peace offerings voluntarily unto Yahweh, one shall then open him the gate that looketh toward the east, and he shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings as he did on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go forth, and after his going forth, one shall shut the gate. Thus shall daily prepare a burnt off thou shalt daily prepare a burnt offering unto Yahweh of a lamb of the first year without blemish. Thou shalt prepare it every morning and thou shalt prepare a meal offering for it every morning. The sixth part in the ephah, and the third part of a hen of oil, to temper with the fine flour, a meal offering, a meal offering continually for a perpetual ordinance unto Yahweh. Thus shall they prepare the lamb and the meal offering and the oil every morning for a continual burnt offering. Thus saith Yah Yahweh, 
if the prince give a gift unto any of his sons, the inheritance thereof shall be his sons. It shall be their possession by inheritance. But if he give a gift of his inheritance to one of his servants, then it shall be his to the year of liberty. After it shall return to the prince, but his inheritance shall be his sons for them. Moreover, the prince shall not take the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession, but he shall give his sons inheritance out of his own possession, that my people be not scattered every man from his possession. After he brought me through the entry, which was at the side of the gate, into the holy chambers of the priest, which looked toward the north, and behold, there was a place on the two sides westward. Then he said unto me, this is the place where the priest shall boil the trespass offering and the sin offering, where they shall bake a meal, the meal offering that they bear not out uh, into the outer court to sanctify the people. Then he brought me forth into the outer court and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court. And behold, in every corner of the court, there was a court. In the four corners of the court, there were courts joined of 40 cubits long and 30 broad. These four corners were of one measure. There was a shelf of masonry around, round about them, and it was made with hearths for boiling places under the rows round about. Then said he unto me, these are the places of them that boil, where the ministers of the house shall boil the sacrifice of the people. Ezekiel 46. Thank you, Dr. Welch. And at this time, choir. My Messiah, my lift me to the holy place. My Messiah, my shine thy light upon my face. Lift the darkness from my eyes. Let me see where Satan lies. Let me know the joy of life known only through you. My Messiah, mine, how I long to be your bride. My Messiah, mine, through you there's eternal life. Let 
up in a world they say happened by chance. They want to believe that it's all in their hands. They try to convince me they shape their own destinies. But if they knew ya, like I knew ya, they get down on their knees. Yes, if they knew Spreading around. Divine intervention is nice if God is ever around. They don't want to believe their every step was patterned by Him, that He's got it wrapped up tight, line upon line. They're going back to spirit again. He's got it wrapped up tight, line upon line. They're going back to spirit again. At this time, I'd like to call Dr. Tina Pettigrew. Good evening. I'd like to say good evening to the class. I guess I already said that, huh? Moment. Um, I'm glad to be here this evening and to uh, testify to some of the things that Yahshua has shown me. And we've been going over this tabernacle pattern. And uh, I'm not going to be up here long. But we come here to learn about our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and to worship Him in spirit and truth, as it says in John 4 and 24. And <clears throat> can I get First John 5 and 7? And um, so... Is that better? Yes. All right. So we come here to learn of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, as he really is and actually exists, and not how we imagine him to be. Okay? And um, as the moderator stated, Yahweh is spirit. And Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in the spirit, pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. 
and then later on manifested himself in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah um, for the purpose of saving with Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, these three are a unity. And then he later on stated that Elohim is the archetype, or original pattern of the universe, and that after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision, and he instructed him to make one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. And that this tabernacle that was made in the wilderness of Sinai was fashioned after what Moses had been seen in the mount, what he had been introduced to. So uh, can we just go back and get real quick uh, Exodus, the 24th chapter? In the ninth verse. Exodus 24 and 1. Sure. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. So Moses was called up into the mount. This was after, after the time um, that uh, he had already come down here and Yahweh sent him to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And they came out by way of blood, the, the blood of the lamb that they had to put on the door, the water through the w divided waters of the Red Sea, and the spirit that guided and led them out into the wilderness of Sinai. And they were up here for some time. And then so now he's saying he wants to call Moses and 70 elders up into the mount. Because... Um, to worship him in spirit and truth, this is beyond the flesh, so we have to uh, go ahead and read. And worship ye afar off, mm -hmm. and Moses alone shall come near Yahweh. So the 70 elders and the rest of the people, they were instructed not to come near the mount, not to touch it, not anything, man or beast, or else they die. So Moses was going to come up here to this mount alone. Read. But they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Okay. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which Yahweh has said will we do. So they went up there and they got some commandments or laws or whatever, and the law from, straight from Yahweh, and, and the people said, all that Yahweh had said will we do and be obedient. Okay, read. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and mm -hmm. built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, there was an altar built. Read. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. <clears throat> So half of the blood he, sp he sprinkled on the basin, and the other half he spread it, uh, put the blood on the people, right? And half of the blood he put in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. I'm sorry, in the basins in the altar, read. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. Okay. And they said, all that Yahweh has said will we do and be obedient. Okay. So this, there's a whole lot of things going on here. Yahweh married himself unto Israel at this point. So he, this was like the first, this was the real marriage, you understand what I'm saying? So he married himself to the people, and they said all that, they, all that Yahweh had said, well, we do and be obedient. See, he led them out of this bondage by a mighty hand, you see. Go ahead and read. Eighth verse, and Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant which Yahweh hath made with you concerning all these words. Right, go ahead. Then went up Moses and Aaron. Okay, so then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, right? And 70 of the elders of Israel. And the 70 elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. See, they saw this Elohim of Israel, read. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Okay, there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. 
Read. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. Mm -hmm. Read. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. and also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Okay, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Um, it wasn't, that wasn't a physical eating and drink. That was a spiritual, see. So we have... Yahweh in his pure spirit state as incomprehensible, inscrutable. This is what would be comparable to what, well, what people call the Lord. It's not really comparable, but God is, this is the true image of God or Elohim, you see, only seen by divine visions and divine revelations, you see, given directly from the creator himself. That's what he did. He came out of pure spirit and revealed himself. So he revealed himself to Moses. He's showing him this. Now they saw Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, 70 elders of Israel, they saw this, but only Moses alone was going to go up and get the days of the creation and how to construct this threefold tabernacle pattern in which everything goes by. Um, so go ahead and um, go ahead and get. Are you? Are you? A, did you read ten yet? Can you skip down to forty, real quick? Um, did you want Exodus twenty-five and eight, and then forty? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among so them. So he says, "Let <coughs> them make me a sanctuary for the purpose of him." dwelling among them read ninth verse according to all that i show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle see yahweh showed this to moses in the mount okay read and the pattern of all the instruments thereof all the instruments thereof even so shall ye make it mm -hmm. 40th verse right and look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee in the mount see they have to make this pattern according to what was shown to them in the mount, okay? So this, there is, we had this image before coming into this class about God and who he was, and this, that was not the image. This here is the image, or this is the image. This is the true Elohim, okay? And what he did was he, the purpose of him, them making this tabernacle is so that Yahweh Elohim, or what people call the Lord, their God, could dwell among them. And we come to find out that he had a name. He has a name, everlasting name, do you understand? And before this time, he had introduced himself to Moses at the mount, and he said, I'm going to, when I... Go down here into the land of Egypt. Who shall I say sent me? And he says, tell him Aya Asher Aya, which means I will be. Aya Asher Aya means I will be what I will to be. And we come to find out that before coming into an understanding that before we would read the Bible as I am that I am. I will be what I will to be and I am that I am are not the same statement. Do not have the same meaning. Maybe Jesus Christ is I am that I am. Yahweh, Yahshua is I will be what I will to be. And he demonstrated that later in um, at the bush with the, with the rod and so forth and so on. And um, showing forth that he will be ro the rod, he will be the serpent, and he will be the rod, and that he works inside and outside the body, okay? But it's by this tabernacle pattern, okay? So he gave him his name. He said, Yahweh, thy Elohim, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, do you understand? That this is he, do you understand? Now, um, so, let me not get off track. 
So we have a name. We have a pattern. He came in to fulfill something, do you understand? Because he is the original law. Regardless, yeah, okay, he set this up, do you understand? But he's still the law that's in effect. So, but it's not an outward thing. It's going to be an inward thing. Okay, so the, the, the tabernacle consists of a most holy place and a holy place and a court roundabout, you see. The purpose of Yahweh, having them make this, is so that he might dwell among them, okay? These are all, this is all allegory. Okay, um, so we have here the most holy place, the holy place in the court roundabout. This is one of the structures that Yahweh instructed man to make. The other structure was Noah's Ark and the temple. Okay, where is it? Okay. All right. So we have this most holy place, holy place, and court roundabout correlating to the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what happened with the Holy Spirit? He came to dwell among us. So we have in this tabernacle that he instructed the children of Israel to make that we have the most chapters dedicated to this, you understand? That everything in the universe is made and operates according to this threefold tabernacle pattern. Because God, with properly Elohim, is the original pattern of the universe. Okay? He is what all things are made from. Can I get John 1 and 1 real quick? And I know you're holding... First John five seven. John one and one. So now we have John one and one. We got something happening when he when Moses was called up in the mount. You will read in Genesis. In the beginning, okay, and we have to ask ourselves what David. In the beginning of what right, and so. Here, we have another beginning going on. So we have Moses on the mount that is seeing Yahweh Elohim, who the world calls God. And over here, we have John on the Isle of Patmos. He's seeing a beginning. Um, In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. Right. And the word was with Yahweh. Now this word, okay, was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. Now this word was Yahweh. Read. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with him. All things were made by him. Hold it. All things were made by him, right? Read. And without him... Was not anything made that was There was made. nothing made without Yahweh Elohim. Nothing. Read. In him was life. Now in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the life was the light of men. Now this same life and the same light this in men, he told them, make them me a tabernacle so that I might dwell among you. So there was life and there was light in Elohim that he might dwell among them. You see? Read. Fifth verse. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So we had certain things going on here. Wasn't Egypt a dark place? But we had, Yahshua was there. Okay. So the light shines in darkness, but the darkness doesn't comprehend it. Read. There was a man sent from Yahweh, mm -hmm. whose name was John. Okay. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. See, he bore witness of the light. He said, I see the spirit descend like a dove. 
and it <clears throat> remained as read. That all men through him might believe. Mm -hmm. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. I'll read. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that See, cometh into the world. Again, he's the true light that lighteth every man, whether you want to admit it or not. Okay, read. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. See, wait a minute. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Okay, so this is one thing that I come across when trying to share this name. Well, the name doesn't matter. He knows who I'm talking to, okay, and it doesn't make a difference. And then the next thing that I hear is, uh, how can you make, my God is so much greater than that, how can you make him so minute, okay? Well, he is as big as you can imagine him to be, and he is as small as you can imagine him to be, because all things were made by him, big and small. So he said he was in the world and what? He was in the world and the world was made by him. Now he was in the world. He was in the world. He was in the world. You mean, you mean um, he was in the world? What, is, what does that mean? He was in the world, read. And the world was made by him. Okay, he was in the world, and all things were made by him. So you mean to tell me we just, the one Yahweh Elohim who just created everything, he was in the world, okay, and he created it. So we're talking about these three are one, Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua. Okay, read. And the world knew him not. But the world didn't know him. They knew him not, read. And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came unto his own, went back to his own, and his own received him not. See, when they set up this law back here, and he came in with them, they were so focused on keeping this law. When Yahshua came in fulfilled, they missed him. Okay, but go ahead and read. But as many as received him, but as many as received him, though, to them gave he power to become the sons see, of Yahweh. You receive that life or that power to become a son of the living Elohim. Okay, read. Even to them that believe on his name. But wait a minute. You believe on his name. So there has to be certain type of faith. And to say that you don't believe what he already told you, and the proof is there, says that you don't have any faith that Yahweh is who he says he is. So you say, oh my God, it is all this and that, but you know, he would never do this, really. Uh, Isaiah something, <laughs> the prophets, you know what I'm saying? He talks about my thoughts, okay, are not your thoughts. See, the person that stands up here and preaches this gospel to you, you see Tina, okay? But you have to see Yahshua. We are speakers. We are vessels. And there's a message that he's trying to give to you so that you might be saved, okay? Read, please. Isaiah? Go ahead. Isaiah... 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways Who's my speaking? ways, saith Yahweh. Yahweh said that. See, what seemeth right to a man, okay, is not what. So Yahweh said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Because there's the second thing. Who are you? You know, I don't take my, my direction from a man. Well, look here, neither do we. This is thus saith Yahweh. This is, somebody else said, this is not my, this is not my ministry. This is his ministry, 
okay? This is something that he's, if you want to call it that, he is the original pattern. He made all things, he was in the world, and the world was created by him. So the, the way you might do something is not the way he would do it, but, um, but it is because you, you know, you say, okay, blood, water, spirit, you understand? What are these principles telling us? What are they pointing to? Why do they repeat so often over and over? You're being, talk about being, where's Mariah, stuck in Groundhog Day, you know what I'm saying, having the same thing going on, on and over and over and over again. Look here, you're going to always see some blood, water, spirit, 40. You understand? Because it's pointing to Yahshua the Messiah, do you understand? And see, you're stuck, into, you're stuck in the same day under the same pattern until you figure out what his love is. Do you understand? Then you can move on into everlasting life. See, even the movies go according to his pattern. So we go to the movies, you know, these people, you know, we can't watch these movies, it's doing all this stuff. See, this pattern will save your, your very thoughts. You understand? People go out and watch this stuff and it's just like, what? And some of these movies are chaotic and you're just like, now that just didn't make no sense. And you know that that's just pure chaos. But most of them, they have to go according to a pattern. There has to be um, an introduction. There has to be a villain. There has to be a climax, and there has to be a resolution. You have to write the story that way. You know, that's, that's how they teach you to do it in film school and all these different things. It goes according to this pattern. Nothing escapes the pattern. Whether you go which, whatever way you go, it, ha it, ha it can't escape the pattern. Okay. Anyway, read. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith Yahweh. Right. For as the heavens are higher than the okay, earth. Okay, now wait a minute. See, the, the heavens are higher than the earth. Okay? You see this earth under his footstool, or as under his feet? That's where he props his feet up. Okay? <laughs> the earth is his footstool, and heaven, it's, it's not the same thing, you see? Read. So are my ways higher than your ways? See, my ways, this is Yahweh speaking, are higher than your ways. Read. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, saith Yahweh. Read. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give, give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word... Hold on. Go back. Read it again, please. That verse? See, you, you see this whole thing that we just talked about. He came out of heaven. He came down. He's just this. The snow comes down. The rain comes down. It waters the earth. Right? Give seed so that it might come back up. Give fruit and bread and, and life. Did he say he's the life? He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You understand? Read, please. You could just, uh, instead of going back, just continue, continue where you were. Uh, and 11, then 11. go over to the other. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. See, his word is not going to return unto him void. When he says, this is my name forever, and my memorial unto all generations, that's what it is, okay? Mm -hmm. Yahweh does not lie. He says what he means, and he means what he says, period, okay? But it shall accomplish that which I please. And, and it's, he's, he, there's another scripture talking about all things are done to his pleasure over in Revelations. When those 12 angels and that beast had to bow to him, at the end, you know, he says... They, they were both just holy, holy, glory. All things are done for your good pleasure. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so that is what we want to understand and know. Do you understand? Okay, go ahead. And it shall prosper in the things <coughs> whereto I sent it. In other words, where, wherever he sent it, it's going to be prosperous. You know, it's going to give off some fruit. It's going to be what he said it was going to be. Read. For ye shall go out with joy, 
and be led forth with, with peace. Mm -hmm. The mountains and the hills shall break forth upon you into singing, or before you into singing. And all trees of the field shall clap their hands. You see this? And it's because, you, it's because of understanding that he is our Elohim. And understanding this tabernacle pattern and how it's made and that everything goes according to it. You can sit back with eyes and say, oh my gosh, everything. But if you don't understand that everything is going by a pattern, then it's going to seem very chaotic to you. And things will be seeming very discombobulated, I would think. Okay, read. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to Yahweh for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. It's an everlasting sign that's never going to be cut off. So we, we talked about it. We have these the altar of sin sacrifice, which this, when, when he gave them the law and the instruction on how to make this tabernacle pattern in order for them to dwell among them, there was a certain, it had a structure to it and it had a function, okay? It had a two four, so you have a, a structure, you know, like just a bare structure, like if you're a building, and then you have an operation that goes on within the building. And we understand that, oh my goodness, your body has a structure, okay? And it also has a function. And so that was for him to dwell among us, right? So um, uh, the altar of sin sacrifice, which had four points of blood on it, okay? for the sacrificing of the sacrifice that they had to take to the high priest, which the high priest represents Yahshua, the Messiah, who is the true intercessor. He's the one who is the true sacrifice who is put on the altar, okay, with four points of blood. He's the true, uh, you know, the washing, okay? It's Yahshua, the Messiah. You see, Yahshua is the true sacrifice, he's the true cleansing, and he's the only one that can quicken your spirit. And he is the door. You understand? So we have the holy anointing oil. You see that priest, that high priest was anointed with this oil. So we have the blood, the water, the spirit. We have the four, four step, 40, representing the door which represents Yahshua the Messiah in the fourth, coming in in the 4,000th year. He came in in the 4,000th year, but that was zero. Everything centers around Yahshua the Messiah. They call him Jesus, but everything is centered around Yahshua the Messiah. So we get to the door, okay, and what, after you enter the door, what's the first thing you come to? You, you got some light. Did he not say, I am the light of the world, the light? to dwell among them, okay? He's the true intercessor, and he is the bread. Didn't we just read over there where it says, uh, he comes down and reigneth, and then the seed comes out, and it comes back up, and that's for the bread and to the, you understand? So the eating is going to be in the spirit, all right? Not in the flesh. And it's a beautiful thing. The mountains are gonna clap their, clap their, did it say clap their hands? You know, have you ever been in a field with just trees blowing in the wind? And just like, shh, it does sound like they're clapping and just praising and just in the wind, you understand? So anyway, you got the seven branch golden candlestick. You have the altar of incense. You have the table of showbread because he is the light. He is the intercessor. He is the bread. Mm -hmm. And you have these two archangels, the mercy seat. Uh, the law that, that was in there and Aaron's rod that budded and you see this one eye and you understand him forgiving the um, this is a glorious place you understand you see the high priest down here he he just has on some regular daily clothes because he did some daily sacrifices but every uh, once a year 
uh, they had to be forgiven on the Day of Atonement. You see, he put on his garments of blue, beauty and glory, and he had those 12 stones in his breastplate, plate, okay, symbolizing the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 disciples, you understand? And, huh? And the 12 orders of angels. And he talks about that again in Revelations, how they're going to they just glorify him in the end. And that's the whole purpose. You see him here, how he's dressed, and here, how he's dressed. You see him here, how he looks, and here, how he looks. You understand? You see here, he's alone and by himself, how he looks. And you see at the end, how he looks. There's angels around him, you understand? Glorifying him. Okay. Go ahead and I'm going to hurry up. Uh, I, I had that scripture, um, 1 John 5 and 7. Because it's going to be through Yahshua the Messiah that we are saved. If we stayed up here and talked about Yahweh in the cloud, that's not going to help us. Okay, so he's wisdom, knowledge, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. You know what I'm saying? He created something, all right. But it's through Yahshua the Messiah and the blood of the Lamb that... We can understand anything about him. That's what builds the faith. So we talk about these, these that he is the true sacrifice. He is the um, only one that the sacrifice, true cleansing, and the only one that can do the anointing. So you have to go to Yahshua the Messiah to even get into the door. Now the gate was wide, what, right? It was like 30 feet, and this door was only 3 feet. And there's a scripture, what does it talk about? Matthew 7, 13, wide is the gate unto destruction, but narrow. narrow is the way. You understand? Again, he is the door. He's the way, the truth, and the light. You can get in the gate, okay? <laughs> it's through Yahshua Messiah, but when you get to this, you get into the gate, there's got to be a sacrifice. There's got to be, uh, there's got to be some blood. There's got to be water. got to be spirit, Okay? Uh, it, in the scripture today, it talked about how they were, I don't understand, they were in, uh, entering in on certain sides of the uh, north side, and the, I don't understand, but you got to come in through this way, okay? Um, there's only one way, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, they were talking about the constructs of the temple, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but go ahead and read. Is it Is it Matthew 7.13? Sure. And then, Enter ye in at Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way. See, that's Yahshua fulfilling. Okay, he's talking about wide is the gate, and narrow is the way. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. See, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And we can take that down today and see that there's millions of people that just flock into the churches. Okay, and, uh, and not just the church, but the idea that um, Jesus Christ, through the worship and praise of I don't know, just a bunch of lies that um, that can get you somewhere. It's not in spirit and it's definitely not in truth. And most of the religious leaders know that they're, they're, they're preaching a lie. But because it brings in some revenue and some social order, you know, they just go with it. So why does the way to destruction? I'm sorry. Read it again. Enter ye in at the straight gate, mm -hmm. for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that mm -hmm. leadeth to destruction. Right. And many there be which go in th thereat, because mm -hmm. straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and See. few there be that find it. See, there's few that be to find it. That means you have to be looking for it. And people have given up. Why, do I, why does this, I've talked to people that says, you know, I just, uh, why does it have... Why does it have to be such a mystery? <laughs> People say that. And I understand, but see, that's where the faith comes in. You have to have the faith, the faith and the belief, the promise. You know, that's why this is why this, that's why when Stephen was about to be stoned, he just like, look, I mean, was it Stephen? I always say that. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, and he was standing up before the, the, uh, um, the judges, you know. They said, do you have anything else left to say? And he just, yeah, I got one more thing to say. 
Abraham was given a promise by Yahweh. Do you understand? And he went back and he went through and they had to go out and, and, and he was sacrificed. And, but through his seed, there would become someone that he would, uh, they would be resurrected unto life. And he, they just went on and on. He on and on about, he just went into the scriptures, just as all the prophets and, and those who are sent by Yahweh do. Do you understand? And so he just went into that and they were what? Pricked at their heart. Why is, you know, whatever. Okay. They were pricked at their heart and he got killed anyway. But so, see, but it's not, that's not anything more than what Yahshua did. There's nothing worse that could happen to you, okay, that he has not already gone through and way far beyond because ours is on a court round about level, which is far lower than the glory. It's just like he says, my thoughts are way higher and, and yours are way lower. And how Lazarus, he was taught, you know, he's like, look, the gulf between us is fixed. That means if, you're, if you have two, or two parallel lines, they're going to run that way forever, okay? They're never going to be perpendicular. They're never going to meet. You understand? Anyway, okay, uh, let's finish, and I got to go down. First John 5 and 7. Uh-huh. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Okay, there's three that bear record in heaven. The Father. The Father, Yahweh. The Word. The Word, Elohim. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. These are in heaven. So there, how many heavens are there? There has to be three because it has to follow the pattern. Okay. So you have the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Read. And these three are one. These three are one. And Not a are, trinity. Read. And there are three that bear witness. In earth. And there's three that bear witness in the earth, because we talked about if there's three in heaven, there's got to be three in earth, and it's got to go according to this tabernacle pattern. And what did we say? That the first thing that we have to come to, we have to come to a blood, right? Okay, read. Mm -hmm. The spirit. The I'm sorry, the the spirit. See, because and the water. he's talk, they're coming down, so he's talking about it's the spirit, it's the water, and, and it's the, the blood. blood, right? And these three agree in one. And these three agree. Agree in one. Okay. Okay. Read. If we receive the witness of men. See, now, if we receive the witness of men. The witness of Yahweh is greater. The witness of Yahweh is greater. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified of his son. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on the son of Yahweh. He that believeth on the son of Yahweh. Hath the witness in himself. Has a witness in himself. Read. He that believeth not. Yahweh mm -hmm. hath made him a liar. Okay. Because he believeth not the record that Yahweh gave of his son. He doesn't believe the record that Yahweh gave of his son. And it's by the blood, the water, the spirit. Death, burial, resurrection. Why? Because Elohim is the true archetype. He made a pattern for us to look at so we can examine and say, does this line up? Does this fit? And we've been going over that tab the tabernacle to see, okay, oh my gosh, it fits so tight that everything goes according to the pattern. You can't, nothing is outside of it. But it's the one thing that is totally, completely neglected in the world. I have no understanding about it because it's by divine vision, divine revelation. Mm -hmm. It's by faith and it's belief. It's in the true name of Yahshua the Messiah by his pattern and that he fulfilled all these things here because this is on a physical level. Now, these, the law is written in the hearts and minds of mankind and that we're trying to share this so that everyone might be released from that bondage. Do you understand? And so, um, is there any more there or did I have anything else out? Okay, so I'd like to thank Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah for allowing me to be here another day to learn another thing about him. See, there's so much more, so much more. Um, we can never get bored in here, ever, never, because uh, there's so many subjects to exhaust because he is the pattern. So we go about in this school to show forth how that everything in the universe is made, everything in the universe is made 
and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern. And that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern because absolutely nothing is going to escape Yahweh Elohim. You understand? Absolutely nothing. You got to come back that way one, one way or the other. You, you're going to come back one way or the other. Do you understand? One way or the other. Okay. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Pettigrew. And at this time, I'd like to call our ca cameraman, Dr. Corey Jackson. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, enjoyed the words of the previous speaker. Uh, dearly, uh, she went into a couple, a few, th a, a few things, uh, that, some things that caught my, my eye. Uh, it's, it truly is a blessing to be here and actually come to learn and um, understand uh, some things about this gospel. If, if um, you know, we continue to learn without an understanding, you know, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for us. You know, it's, it's a scripture uh, talking about all thy gettings get an understanding. And, um, you know, that's what this gospel here uh, does, does for us. Like she, like the previous speaker was saying, it's nothing that escapes that pattern. You know, and, sh and she, she uh, even brung up the movies and stuff like that. You know, and, and nothing actually escapes the pattern. Prime example is, it, you know, when you when you want to um, when you want to uh, do anything, you know, you want to uh, uh, start a business or, you know, draw a painting, do anything. You have to first come up with that in your mind. Now that now when you're thinking about that in your mind, can you touch that? Can, is it is it a is it a reality at that point? No, it's not. So that is, and the previous speaker was correlating this, this tabernacle, this most holy place, as in Yahweh, and this is uh, our most holy place, our head cavity, is that's where Yahweh is, dwells in us, uh, running everything. Uh, it's abstract. It's, you can't touch. You can't touch Yahweh. You can't touch him. It's, he's pure spirit. And so you, you can't get to it. So that, that, that concept or that that business that you want to do or anything that you want to do, you then have to put it in a plan or a set order, right? It, or, or else, it, you know, if you go to follow out the plan and if it's not in a set order, it's not going to come to fruition. So, so that's, exactly, that's exactly what Yahweh done, is put himself, his spirit, in order. So now he can operate his order in the in the in the flesh, or 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 um, or uh, for us, it would be us. Uh, it would be us putting that business plan down, and then going about to do that business plan or do that thing to um, make sure that 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 business comes along in a in a particular way, or just like a movie, if you had a had a concept of that movie, it's, it's abstract. Then you have to put it in order. You have to put it in that same context as the previous speaker was saying. You have to, it's got to be a plot. It's got to be a villain. It's got to be a, you know, a, a, a savior, so to speak. You know, and um, you put that thing in order and then you shoot the movie. And that's, and that's, and that's, that's ex pretty much exactly what Yah Yahshua, Yahweh is doing and how he's operating. It's just, you know, and she also talked about, she also talked about um, 
the light, you know, and how he uh, lighteth every man. If we can get that in John, John 1 and 1. Or as it uh, on down a little bit. She already read it. I just want the part where um, it says that he, he lighteth every man. I think it's like four, ten, maybe? Nine. Eight and nine. Okay, I'm going to start at eight. Okay. John one and eight. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. The true light was that which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, the true man that, it, that enlightened or lighteth every man that cometh to the world. Now, it's, that's said or understood to be that he give us a sufficient amount of intelligence to understand his purpose, pattern, and plan. He gives us enough intelligence to understand that. That's what that means. That's, what, that's exactly what that means. And... Uh, um, since he does that, it's, and it, we was reading, um, Dr. Underwood was going, was going over a, a transcript the other day, something that also caught my eye, that, um, you know, uh, without this, they didn't have, back here, they didn't have the uh, science. They didn't have the science to be able to back up some of these things. But now we come to understand that our brain our brain operates, or when we have thoughts and stuff like that, that's a bunch of electrical pulses, electrical impulses shooting through your, shooting through your vein. I mean, it's shooting through your vein, your brain. <laughs> shooting through your brain and, and, and making these connections. That's what's happening. It's a, it's, it's a light. It's a light. It's electrical. Now, if, 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 if that, you know, if that is... Um, you know, that can be an indicator that Yahweh enlightened every man. And he gave us, he gave us light. And it wasn't, you know, we wouldn't be able to, um, we wouldn't be able to understand or we wouldn't be able to um, know that for, I guess we would, how can I say it? Um, we get evidence. That's what we get. When we um, when we see some of these things that's brought out in the sci in the science about our about our even our body, um, um, I have so much more to say about it. But you know, sometimes you <laughs> sometimes you get up here and you know, and it, and it kind of all goes. But it, it's it's by a pattern. It's by a certain uh, way that we come into this gospel. Um, um, it's just, you know, and, and also the previous speaker was talking about, uh, about the names. And it was, it's been going over about these names, and these names are important. And what happens is people have substituted uh, Yahweh's name for Lord and Elohim's title for God, or Yahweh's title that he chose for himself for God and, uh, and substituted uh, Yahshua for Jesus Christ. Now, um, if I, 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 I went to school, uh, we got a couple of school um, age people in here. You know, when you are in a school and, um, you know, you have a, a, your teacher and your daily curriculum and stuff like that, you have, you, and, and, you know, the teacher might get sick or something like that, the teacher have to take a, a day off and you get a substitute. <laughs> now, if you get a substitute, what happens when you get the substitute? You run wild. <laughs> you run wild. Now, you can't, what, what, what I'm trying to say is, is you can't get the teaching that you would normally get from the real teacher from the substitute. It's all, it's a matter of fact, it's an impossibility. Matter of fact, and what we saw, we always say knowledge is power. Not, you know, knowledge is power. And all of that stuff, and the same things, you know, uh, if knowledge is power, then you, then you can't get the power from the substitute. It's power in his name, Yahshua. And you can't get the power from the substitute. Just like the previous speaker was talking about up here. She was saying that they saw the 70 children of Israel and, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Moses also, 
Joshua, uh, called Joshua also, saw the, the Elohim of Israel or the God of Israel. That's what it says in the King James Version. But we know that his title, his true title is Elohim. Now they saw the Elohim of Israel. These 70. Now Moses was called up. Moses alone, Joshua went with him, was called up on top of the mount. And they were told to wait and tarry. But they did not. They came down and they built themselves a substitute. And they tried to worship and get the power from this thing, from this golden calf, you know, and, 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 they, and they couldn't. Matter of fact, Yahweh got mad and, 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 destroy, and destroyed a lot of them, killed a lot of them. It's no way you can get the power. It's power in the name. It's power. It's power in the name, you know, and uh, it's, it really is a, a blessing to, to be able to just even put on or, or say a couple a couple words about him and the power that he that he has you know uh, I really don't have too much I could I could say a, I could I guess I could you know ramble on a, about a lot of things but no rambling here because it's in you know it's it's a set it's a set order and you know sometimes you just you know, you, you need to speak a cur certain things and, and you know, and, and, and take your seat, you know. And uh, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I also want to just, you know, give my appreciation, my thanks for this. Because like the previous speaker was saying, you go out into the world and you try and give people names, the, the, you know, teach and tell people the names. And they feel like it's not important. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And of course, of course it matters. Of course it matters. You know, how else do you know? How else are you able to identify anybody? How are you able to identify anybody, one from another? You know, you, you, it's an impossibility if I'm, if I'm, hey you, who are you? You who? You know? <laughs> no, I have to put that on, I have to put a name on that. You know, just to identify. So we got a, a, a Elohim that is above. His name is above every other name. We have we have a, a, a most powerful Elohim <laughs> that was in the world. You know what I mean? Without controversy. Without controversy. Can we get that? If, we, if somebody know where that is, without controversy, uh, y'all. Yeah. Uh, say again. First Timothy three sixteen. First Timothy three sixteen. I mean, it's it's without it's without controversy. It's, it, it, that means if it's saying that, and we have faith in that, then that's saying that it's a it's it must be some evidence. It must be some evidence. It must be something to prove that. It must be some. It must be something there about it. So it's not a matter of fact of it, that it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It does matter. Can we read? Uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy 3 and 16. It's on. And beyond controversy, deep is the mystery of holiness. Huh? You can get the King James King Version. James. Okay. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Now, Yahweh was manifested in the flesh. That Yahweh was manifested in the flesh. Here, justified in the, in the spirit. From here, he was, the lamb, he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Before anything, before the world, before he made all of this stuff, he knew he was going to have to come in and die for his bride. That he married down here, and he was gonna have to come in and die for his for his children. Read. Sorry. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Believed on in the world. Received up into glory. And was received up into glory. That is we without controversy. So it must be some proof. It must be some real faith, 
Faith is substance. Faith is not nothing. Faith is not just the mere belief in invisible things. You know, people, can we get that? Let's get Romans 1, 19 and 20. You know, people think that you can't see, you know, invisible things. I was talking to a friend not too long ago, and she was telling me, you know, well, how could you know that all of that stuff really took place? You know, that you wasn't there. You know, those things are invisible to you. You wasn't there. But read. Romans 1, 19 and 20. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world See? are clearly seen. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world is clearly seen. Invisible things. And we just was talking about some of those, those, those concepts about, uh, you know, trying to create a business or whatever that you're doing, you know, whatever that you want to put into action. If you're just getting up and going to the bathroom, your mind has to communicate with your body and then you put it in action. Or, you know, and it's, your body is in a set order, you know, and it's operating by a function. And without the spirit dwelling in it, it won't get up. It won't move. It won't do nothing like that. We see a lot of that uh, in the hospitals today. You know, people in comatose states and stuff like that. Should we keep them on the ventilator? Should we not? And all of that. But um, you can keep a body running, but without that spirit, it's, it's, you know, it's, not, it's, it's no life. It's, it's not real. He's not really there. The person are, is not really there. Um, so like I was saying, it, it, it was a, um, it's just a beautiful thing, uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing that Yahshua has done uh, with us, even giving us this tidbit, you know, because really this is a tidbit. This is not the whole thing. <laughs> and you like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, wow. He explaining the creation. He explaining everything. And, it's, and nothing escapes this pattern. Nothing is outside of Yahweh. He can explain it all. You know, I was watching this other little uh, science program, you know, I know I kind of jump around just giving some testimony, but uh, I was watching a science program and uh, a guy was saying about you cannot understand everything in a, un in a universe from this universe. It has to be something bigger or more uh, bigger to explain everything within this this universe and then you know and then so on and so on he, he, he made the comment but that's true you cannot explain this existence from this existence alone you have to and you need Yahshua to reveal it to us that come from outside matter of fact he is the bigger thing than the universe. He is the thing that the universe w abides within. Uh, what's that? First Corinthians, what's that? Uh, Acts uh, 14, 28? 17? 17 to 28. We, we, we move, live, and have our being. Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, See? for we are also his offspring. Poets, scientists saying it now, you know, <laughs> we do really live, move, and have our being within him. That is that greater uh, body to explain this existence. Without him, it's, it's unexplainable. You cannot get, you cannot get to it. They try to get to spirit. They try to get through to spirit through science and study of this creation. And the most they come up with is guess what? You think the most they come up with, do you know? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Now they'll tell you about it, you tell you, they'll tell you all about how to, you know, how life came about and all that stuff. You say, well, how did life originate? We don't know that yet. And then you say, well, they tell you about how the Big Bang came around and all that stuff. And you say, don't you, 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 you uh, go according to the uh, physics and you, you got this thing called cause and effect. Well, what set the, what set the, what caused it? Mm -hmm. And then they say, 
Nothing. They really believe, they really don't know what it is. But they're calling spirit, they don't know what spirit is. They're calling spirit nothingness. And as soon as you start, as soon as you think about nothing, it becomes something. As soon as you think about nothing, it becomes something. So spirit is not nothing. Spirit is substance. Spirit is, that's what this creation is made out of. And if, and, and, and if, that's, what, if that's true, then it is going to take Yahweh Elohim himself to come down and explain this creation to us. And then it's going to take Yahweh Elohim himself, Yahshua, in us to understand or get some understanding about the creation. It's going to take that. It is no other way to do it. That is that narrow way you did, that, that, that um, the previous speaker was talking about, that narrow way that few will find. Not many. Few is going to find this way. And so many is the wide is the way of destruction. That's, that's easy. We can walk outside and get hit by a car any day. You know, all that's, anything can happen these days. You know, people are knocking on doors and shooting people down. That was one of my friends that, that was shot down in the uh, East, East Lansing not too long, a couple days, well, last week. His, his funeral was a couple days ago. But this, this it's, it's chaotic down here. It's, it's dark. It's dark. And, and the previous speaker said the light, the, the darkness comprehends the light not. You come into a dark room, you turn on the light, what happens? The dark run away. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's what I see. The dark runs away. It goes away. It doesn't understand the light. It is it's gone. You can see now. It's, it illuminates the room. And that's that enlightenment that we're talking about. That's that light up here that we're, that we're talking about. That's where we really want to have that shining light so we can see in this dark, gruesome world out here. It's so tre treacherous out here. So treacherous. And yet, we get up and we come here and we preach. And it seems like we're preaching to, to the choir, to each other, and stuff like that. Yahweh hear us, you know, and he know, he, know, he know our call. He know we want, he know we want to tell the world. He know, he know. He's going he's gonna to make it happen soon. So, so just, you know, I, you know, I'm encouraged by that. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, you know, because... It's getting ready to happen soon. And, uh, you know, with those, uh, with those few words, uh, I say hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Jackson. And for those of you that are appropriately dressed, we have open testimony. All praises to Yahshua the Messiah, power and dominion both now and forever. I just would like to come to this name chart and just explain a few things on it. I would like to first point to Yahweh. On this chart, we have him symbolized as pure spirit. And Yahweh is pure substance, essence, formless. He is the substance from which everything was created. He contains all of creation within himself. And in this state, he's incomprehensible. So we can know nothing of him unless he reveal it. He came into the form of Elohim, which is a lesser form. Elohim is a super incorporeal form. It is 
only seen in divine visions and is only understood in divine revelations. Elohim is the word of Yahweh or the Son. We have Yahshua, whether he be in a physical form or a super incorporeal form. Yahshua is also the Holy Spirit. He came down into flesh, and it did not take all of Elohim, all of Yahweh to do this. He is able to exist in all three forms at the same time. It does not take all of his power to do this. He's able to maintain creation. He didn't just start creation. He maintains creation. He maintains everything. There is nothing going on by chance. This is a plan. And everything is going according to his plan. As Elohim, he created everything. And Elohim is a pluralistic title. It's pluralistic because it contains Yahweh Elohim, his word. And it's also the manifestation so that we can understand something about Yahweh. Now we have Ayah, Asher, Ayah. And this is what Yahweh told Moses when Moses asked him for his name. He told him, Ayah, Asher, Ayah, I will be what I will to be. And he gave him several descriptions of the power that is in his name. And he showed them, <clears throat> excuse me, he showed Moses, I will be infirmity if I will to be infirmity. I will be a rod if I will to be a rod. I will be a serpent if I will to be a serpent. He also told Moses that if the people still did not believe him, he would change water to blood. And all Moses had to do was scoop it up out of the Nile and pour it on the land. So Yahweh shows that in his name is power and that he really will be what he wills to be. Now we have the Tetragrammaton, the Yod, the Hey, the Wad, the Hey. This is what was given to Moses. And in Hebrew, it is written, they have no vowels, so it's written right to left and only in consonants. So the Yod or the hand transliterates to the Y in English. The hey transliterates to the H in English. The Y represents and transliterates into the W in English. So we have Yahweh. We add the A from Adam, the first male, and also the A, androgen, which symbolizes the male hormone. Androgen actually is the male hormone. And this provides the masculine portion of the name Yahweh, the Yah. Then we have the way, and we have Eve bearing witness to this name. Just as Adam contained woman within him, he contained masculinity and femininity within himself. Yahweh, in principle, is the mother and father of creation, contains both masculine and feminine in principle. Now, we have most holy, holy court roundabout. This is the pattern. This is Yahweh. This is Yahweh. We were made in this image. We were made by this pattern. Everything was made by this pattern. We have Yahshua, the court roundabout. We have Elohim, the holy place, and we have Yahweh, the most holy place. Now, in order to get to the most holy place, you have to enter in through the court roundabout, Yahshua. And as the previous speaker said, Yahshua is the way. He is the door. He is the light. No man may come in to the Father but by him. We have the name Jesus Christ. This is a name. However, it is an erroneous name. This is not the name that the Messiah carried when he walked this planet. Yahshua came in his father's name, Yahweh. You see the Yah and the Yah. We know Yah is the poetic form of Yahweh. 
And we know Shua is Hebrew for salvation. So Yahshua would mean Yahweh is salvation. And that's a beautiful thing because that's the plan. That is the plan. In my mind, I understand that when Adam and Eve were in the garden and the serpent deceived Eve, he did that because he knew he was going to perish. The wages of sin are death. And Yahweh requires blood. So if we are to atone for sin, there must be a blood atonement. And this is also evidenced by the altar, the brazen altar of sin sacrifice. And there were to be put points of blood on the altar because blood is a symbol of death and the wages of sin are death. Now, Yahweh was not about to allow Lucifer to get away with deceiving man. He did, it is not his will that any should perish. He wishes that all should be saved. Now, so we needed a sacrifice. We needed a sacrifice to make it okay for us to come back to Yahweh. We needed a sacrifice. All of creation, there's nothing that was created that was worth, I should say, that was, would be able to atone for the blood of man. So Yahweh decided that the only blood that was precious enough was his blood. So he became our sacrifice. And he wants you to understand that he is our sacrifice. So we are to believe on him. We are to understand that he is the sacrifice, that he is the way. You must understand that you must believe in him. You must have faith that he did die and resurrect and he did this for your sins. He did this for salvation, to become salvation. That was the plan. He is the court roundabout. The plan was salvation. And the only blood that is righteous, the only blood that is acceptable, is holy blood, and that's his blood. So he made it okay for us to come back and to, rec and to, to be reconciled unto him. He made it okay. And... We have fulfillment, prophecy, and law. And this is evidence of this. Moses was given the law, and the prophets support the law. And then you have the fulfillment. And Yahshua is the fulfillment. There were three things that Yahweh asked man to build. There were three things, the ark, the tabernacle, and the temple. And we were given specific instructions on how these were to be built. They were not to be built in any manner. They were be built to be built according to the pattern. And the pattern is the tabernacle pattern, the court roundabout, the holy place, and the most holy place. Everything is to be built by that pattern, just as Yahweh is that pattern, and we were made in the image of that pattern, we also were made by that pattern. And just as Adam is the first male, some people used to say back in the day, break it down to the last compound. And when you break it all the way down, you come to an atom, an atom, A-T-O-M, which is the building block of everything. And on this green chart we have over here, we have the atom, and we have evidence that it also goes according to the pattern of the court roundabout electron, the holy place, which is the proton, excuse me, the neutron, the holy place, which is the neutron. Of course, the most holy place would be above the holy place. <laughs> okay, and the holy place, the proton. So this also goes according to the pattern. Not only does everything that it compromise that it is built from it goes according to the pattern, but it too goes according to the pattern. Okay. I also want to make, mission, make mention while we were on the name of Jesus Christ, I would also like to mention that Jehovah, both of these names are erroneous. Jehovah actually comes from the Tetragrammaton, so it's a derived 
form of Yahweh. But Yahweh said, this is my name forever. This is my memorial to all generations. He did not say, change it, give him a nickname. He didn't say that. He said, this is my name forever. And we know he does not change, so therefore, he will not change his mind. Now, proof that Jehovah is erroneous, as well as Jesus Christ, is that there was no J in Hebrew, Greek, or Latin languages. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until 1400 through 1600 years after the Messiah's death. So sometime after 1400 years AD, we have the first possibility of this J coming into existence. Because there's a little argument, there's a little bit of a debate as to when exactly this J came into existence. However, we know it was at least 1,400 years after the death of the Messiah. So it's not possible for his name to have been Jesus. Neither is it possible for Yahweh's name to have been Jehovah. Because we all know that Yahweh was, well, I want to say Yahweh was before Jesus, but actually... We do know that in the beginning, Yahshua was with Yahweh. So, but to put that into perspective, a better way to say it, it's just that there was no J. His name could not have been Jesus. And this name did not come about until after the name Yahweh had been, had been revealed. Because we cannot know nothing unless it be revealed. The only way we know anything of Yahweh is if he wishes it to be known and if he reveals it. So he revealed the name Yahweh. And proof of that is he said his son will come in his name. So we know the name Yahweh was first and that Yahshua came second. So Jehovah, if there's no, if the name could not have been Jesus, then the name also could not have been Jehovah. And we also know where Jehovah came from. So we know it is a, it's an offshoot, it's derived from Yahweh, but it's not Yahweh. And Yahweh said his name, this is his name forever. And I keep going back to that because people keep trying to find ways around that. So I keep having to say, no, he said, this is my name forever. And I'm waiting on a good argument as to why it's okay to change that name. Because he said, this is my name forever. In my mind, forever means forever. Okay, we have... I am that I am. Some people translate Aya Asha Aya in the King James Version, it's written, I am that I am. But this is too limiting. We know that Yahweh can do all things. He created all things. You can't even conceive of anything that he can't do. The only thing he cannot do is lie. He cannot lie. He is holy, holiness to Yahweh. He cannot deceive, he does not tempt. He cannot be tempted. So he does not cause evil. And a lot of people often feel like Yahweh allows something to happen or Yahweh caused something to happen. Yahweh does not cause evil. Yahweh does not, he cannot be tempted. He's not of evil. He wishes that all would be saved. If he wanted all to be saved, why would he harm you? He wants you safely in his kingdom with him. Okay, we have God. This is the title. It's not a name. We have Lord. This is a title. It's not a name. We have Father, Word or Son, Holy Spirit. Yahweh is the Father. Elohim is the Word or Son. Yahshua is the Holy Spirit. And I just want to say it truly is a blessing to come and know anything of Yahweh, to come and know anything of Yahshua. And to be able to speak on that, to be given the opportunity to say something positive, all I can say is hallelujah. It's a blessing. It truly is. And with that, I would like to yield the floor. And thank you. Hallelujah.
There's still time for a short testimony. Good evening. I just want to say that I enjoyed the things that Yahshua the Messiah, who is the true teacher, brought out through the various vessels this evening. Um, I particularly enjoy when they're going over things regarding the, what to us is, is, is still heartwarming and um, just love. I guess I'll call it. The fact that you know, he, he introduced himself to us you know, gave us his name, gave us his divine title, and then showed us that as Yahshua, meaning Yahweh is salvation, that we have that uh, earnest of inheritance through the Holy Spirit, and that um, we have that eternal life as a promise. So uh, these things are precious to us. And this chart right here, which is a two-in-one chart, it has this upper portion is the name chart, and this chart down here is the unity chart which the speaker was going through, showing us that it says here, Yahweh is spirit, substance, essence. He's formless. In this pure spirit state, he has no form. And then it didn't take all of him to come and set himself into the form of Elohim, the superincorporeal form. And here he manifests in visions to Moses, John, and all the various prophets. And then we've got scriptures related to that. He was seen at the transfiguration by Peter, James, and John. Then he came in a physical form as Yahshua. And as Yahshua, there's also, um, and this is something that's gone over in other classes by other vessels who are a little bit more versed with regard to the scriptures, but um, uh, those, who, those that refer to Joshua in the uh, Old portion, portion Testament, the Old Testament portion of the Bible, that's Yahshua. And when he was back here, you know, he was known as Moses' minister. He was a young man. He wasn't invited to go up onto this mount, yet he was there. Okay? And that's a mystery that's revealed. Dr. Kinley revealed, because Yahweh gave him permission to do so, the things regarding that to show that he was the one, Yahshua, that set things up here. And then he is going to come as Yahshua, the Messiah, to fulfill these things. So knowing even just this little bit, okay, when I first heard it, I was blown away. And when I hear it again, it's just very heartwarming to me because it's a confirmation again and again the things that are said with regard to the proofs that's given regarding his name, the fact that he is a unity, it's him that's doing all of this. Like I said, it doesn't take all of him to move from this state to this state. It doesn't take all of him to move from this state to this state. He is... As was stated, Ayah Asher Ayah, I will be what I will to be. So that's, you know, covering the name. And then when we go in into showing you that Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, he's Elohim's the archetype original pattern, and then that he went ahead and showed himself as this tabernacle pattern, and that it's broken down into that one, two, three, most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. That one tabernacle showing Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, that one spirit. That one spirit, not a trinity. That, to me, I, I'm just so thankful to understand that because I know for a long time I didn't understand what was meant by Yahweh, Elam, and Yahshua, these three are one. And I had to ask, please explain this to me. And it was broken down to me. I mean, they went back and showed what Roman Catholicism had been teaching as being a trinity. And when I saw that, I thought, wow, I can't believe I believe that. <laughs> when I saw the scriptural proof saying that he is a unity and that there's only one spirit. They did all, they did all this. So, you know, it's, it's, like I said, it's just beautiful to know some of these things now for surety, to have that in our hearts and our minds, knowing who it is that he is. Because our first aim of the school is to help you find and know Yahweh 
as he really is and actually exists. I mean, that's the aim of this school. So that's why we go through the efforts that we do with regard to the, the youth streaming, but even just people that give up their monies, their hard-earned monies, so that we can have some place to meet, and people who have given up time to paint these charts, you know, and reproduce them, et cetera, and to come here, because it's important for our existence, not our physical existence, but yes, our physical existence does benefit. <laughs> it does, because like the previous speaker says, you know, and I've had a friend who says this to me, I'm just so thankful because otherwise I'd be crazy. I mean, she, that's basically what she says. And I, you know, you know what? I agree with her. <laughs> because when I look back at all the things, and believe me, they went through a lot down here. And it was only because, you know, Yahshua was here with them. And that Yahweh led them out by a mighty hand. Well, that's the only reason why we're able to be where we're at right now in our hearts and our minds. is because his, he led us out of this darkness, out of this chaos. You know? And so because he's led us out of that into the understanding that he is in control, that we're able to say thank you when we wake up another day. <laughs> we're able to say thank you that we can walk down the street. Not because we won't have anything happen to us. Heck, you know? I, I got, you know burglarized last year. I've been through a divorce. I've been through, through surgeries. I've had stuff happen to me. I'm sure all of you have too. But guess what? I haven't gone crazy. Because <laughs> let this mind this in Yashua's side being you. And I'm going like, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Yashua. <laughs> so, you know, I'm glad that he's here and that he, he has given us faith that he is salvation and that we have been promised eternal life. And for that, you know, like the previous speaker says, and the other speakers, thank you, Yashua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Underwood. And at this time, I'd like to ask if there's any comments or questions. I'd like to make a special announcement about Dr. Gray. He's in Sparrow Hospital. He's in room 585. And there's a phone number. It's area code 517. Six four when you plan in the sea, put it in the ground. Dr. Gray is in the Death hospital. Death is the Sparrow state hospital. of its condition. Then you see it come to fruition. That's a type of resurrection. When you turn off the light and go to sleep at night, bury your head beneath the covers. Arise in the morning, oh, that's it's just another. Type of resurrection. And to present you so faultless I know before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Tell me, do to you the only wise Elohim, yes, I know our Savior, that through Yahshua, the Messiah, I our Sovereign, he gave me all the glory. Proof. Yes, I know that he lets my dominion lives. and yes, power both for all you? time now How about and you? ever. This unite me say, Hallelujah. Israel ate that lamb, then left Egypt's land to the Red Sea. Oh, Pharaoh right behind them. Through divided waters, Yah delivered them on dry land. That's a type of resurrection. Old Joseph was a dreamer, his brothers did despise. They put him in that hole, for they sought to take his life. Then he was lifted up by the merchants passing by. That's a type of resurrection. So I know that. This I know. Tell me, do you? Yes, I know that he lives. My Redeemer lives. Oh, he lives. He gave me all the proof. Yes, I know that he lives. My Redeemer lives. This I know. How about you? How about you? Abraham was faithful, took his son to sacrifice. Then Yahweh said, You please me, he don't have to take his life. Then he 
turned around to see the ram Yah did provide. That's a type of resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection.